Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about wire nuts. But first, I want to thank those of you who have subscribed. You're the folks that keep the commercials out of these programs. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, please consider it and help join the team keeping commercials out of these videos. This is a container of wire nuts. I keep one in the garage. These are basically wire nuts that I have either bought or uh, are left over from other projects. Sometimes they give you too many or you don't need them because the, exi the existing ones in an outlet are, are suitable. So I end up with this little pile. Um, though they tend to be color coded, um, they aren't always what they appear to be. Case in point, these are all yellow wire nuts, but each one is for a different size and gauge of wire. Thus, color isn't always the indicator. The best way to tell is to look at the product guide. Here for yellow, it says two wires at 18 gauge up to three wires of 12 gauge, and it breaks it down for the tan color and the red color. In addition, there are instructions on how to strip the wire for best use with each connector. Sometimes you get instructions on how to actually make the connection, which can be controversial. More on that later. The purpose of a wire nut is simply to make an electrical connection between two or more wires. In the old days, electricians would actually solder the two wires together. Then they got into crimping the two wires together, and then eventually we got wire nuts, which allow you to bond the two wires in a connector. There are other methods of doing it. There's this in which you can insert wires and this crimps. So kind of a, a throwback to the old day, except it's already insulated. You have this type of connector where you can stick one or more wires, crimp, and then attach to a terminal. And these, which are push connectors, and they have various openings on the back. There's a metal bus on the inside that electrically connects any wires that are inserted. It has a viewing area so that you can see that you've made the connection. And generally, it's a one-way connection, though there are tricks where you uh, twist the cable and you can free it out and repurpose again. There's uh, another brand called Wago, I believe, in which the connection can be made and broken with a switch. To, and by that, I mean there's a switch that you insert the wire and you close and it locks the wire in place. To release the wire, you raise the little switch on it and it releases the wire. Whereas these, it's a spring connection on the inside and it locks the wire in place. These are nice. They can take up less space. They tend to be fast because you just cut the wire, push it in, and, and you're done. And the bus handles spreading the electrical connection to any other wires you push in there. And this little knockout there, that allows you to test this connection. So you can actually put a probe in there and get a reading on the electrical or ohms or continuity that you want to measure. So these are nice, but we're not going to be talking about these, basically because wire nuts are really inexpensive and they're everywhere, at least in the USA. Uh, they're different types. This is ribbed and you would just twist that on. This one has wings, which give you a little bit of an advantage when you're trying to torque down the connector. And our commercial electric gives you the best of both worlds. It's ribbed and it's winged. Here we have the three type of connectors that come in this package, the red, tan, and yellow. Each one has a metal coil inside that narrows down, which when you insert the wires and turn this clockwise will bond the metal together so that you have an electrical connection and hold it securely in place if you're using the proper gauge and the proper number of wires. For example, this red can hold two 14 gauge wires and can go 
to five 12 gauge wires. Now the TAN can go from two 20 gauge wires to three 10 gauge wires, whereas the yellow can go from two 18 gauge wires to three 12 gauge wires. You may have noticed that there's just a bit of overlap. So sometimes you're able to use the yellow or the tan, depending on the gauge and the number of wires you're using. And the same thing with the red and the tan. So why would you wanna go with the red versus the tan or the tan versus the red if they both can work with a particular gauge and number of wires? Well, the TAN is a smaller connector, so if space is an issue, then this may be the way to go if that particular gauge can go into here. The reason to go with the bigger one is, obviously, you have more wires that you're trying to get in there, or you really need to torque something down and you want something a little bit bigger, or size is not an issue. And now for the controversial part of the program. To make your connection, many people will tell you, you take the pair, you put the wires together, the tips, you have stripped off about a half inch of insulation, and then you twist them together with a pair of Kleins or uh, lineman pliers. So you get this, then you attach your wire nut. According to many of the manufacturers of these wire nuts, what you do is you align the two solid wires, and then you slip on your connector and you twist until the wire itself twirls around twice. Then you've made a connection that they say is proper. Why do people say that this is the only way to do it versus this? It could be just because that's the way they've learned it a long time ago, and they're not willing to change to this method. I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. We're gonna put a wire nut here and we're gonna put a wire nut on this one. The two straight strands are green and then we got a, a red and a green one here. And we're gonna see if there's any difference once we tighten them down and then take off the wire nuts. But this is the recommended way where we'll take the two, align them, take our wire nut, I'm gonna go with the tan and then we twist on. And then once I get two turns, like so, right? Then this is done. So now I'm gonna pick up my already twisted. Grab a tan connector twist this on, and you always turn clockwise. And you say to yourself, what if you're left-handed? Well, oh, by the way, you still do the two twists here. Um, I'm left-handed, and I'm doing it with my right hand. Righty, tighty, that's the way, you just, it's the way you do it. Okay, so now we've made both of our connections. So let's undo and see if there's any difference in the winding. And hopefully, you see this comes off fairly easy. And of course, you're gonna pull on these to make sure that they're not loose. And we're gonna unwind this one. So, if we take a look, we see that this has not changed from the way I tightened it down with the pair alignments, right? And if we look at this, we see this is not as tight, but you can definitely see the marks here where the wire nut has clamped down. And this is a little bit uneven. And I think that's part of the issue that uh, electricians have is that because it's uneven, it could potentially come loose. I mean, if the wire nut comes off on this one, it's still held together, right? It could still cause a short and that could still be an issue, but you're not having these wires separate out and then start sparking across because there's intermittent connection, which could cause a fire. 
And I'm not saying that this is going to do the same thing, but you can see here that there is a slight difference between what you can achieve by twisting it down first and then applying your wire nut and just going in with the manufacturer's recommended procedure. I leave it up to you to decide which one's better for your electrical needs. And just for fun, I did the same thing with the yellows because the yellows will also take this. This is a 14 gauge wire. So there's no issue with using the yellows. And again, uh, the green was just the pair side by side. So let's untwirl that one first. And again, you can see the marks on the wire where the wire nut has got them together and it's a very tight connection there. So that's nice, but it's, it's only one twist, right? Whereas, again, because we manually twisted this one with the Kleins, the Lyman pliers, there are a lot more twists. It looks a lot more secure, but the manufacturer says this is what they recommend. You can go with either one. As far as commercial electric winged wire connectors go, I like the fact that they give you the benefit of both ribbed, which is good for gripping, and if you need the extra torque, you can use these wings to help you apply that pressure. The 30 in the pack, 10 of each color is nice, so you have a variety. Obviously, if you're an electrician, you're gonna buy these in bulk, so you'd be getting them in a box or in a plastic container. Um, one thing I don't like is the fact that they're in a bag, so they're all mixed up, so you sort of have to dig through it, and you wanna keep this information with these connectors because this information specifically applies to these colors of this manufacturer. They may vary a little bit between the different manufacturers. So if you're doing something like this, it could be uh, iffy if you pick up a yellow one and you think you know what it is. Uh, my, my problem with the baggie is that I like having it in a container. They, there are manufacturers that put stuff in trays so you get a variety pack in a tray and it's easier because they're all segregated. I will probably put this into a container like this and then throw this guide in there with it so that I know what I'm working with. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. Don't forget to join the subscription team. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.